welcome to this episode of DIY3DTech.com. In this episode, we're at the JG Aurora, and I want to share this design I have out on Thingiverse for a uh, dial indicator holder for the JG Aurora. So I whipped this up, sort of a little bit modified from the um, Creality version that adapts in a dial indicator to the JG Aurora. Now, the hot end on this is a little bit different, especially since it actually bumps right up against this motor over here. So what I really had to do is take a big piece out of here and then create a clip down here that clips on the bottom part. Now, pretty much this is only going to fit on the stock um, JG Aurora configuration. I know a lot of folks down here have modified this blower. And uh, so if you've modified it, I don't know if it'll fit or not. It might because I kind of designed this clip with a little bit of give and also an angled piece with a little bit of a tooth here. So it's uh, printed sort of like this with the supports and uh, just kind of clips on. I've also created some G-code for this particular printer because this is a little bit different than the Creality because the Creality is uh, on the front. This is kind of turned around the other way so I had to modify some of the code. So let's go ahead and start that and I'll show you how all that works. So I'm going to go ahead and run the code for the setup routine and we'll talk about it. So what's going to happen is the first thing it's going to do is, is go ahead and home itself. And so this will take a minute or so to home itself. Okay, so it's completed its homing and now it's raised itself up for me to install it. It's going to wait here for 20 seconds and it just, this end just pops on here sort of like that. Now let's power on the gauge. Now what will happen is after this 20 seconds it will lower itself down and then what I will do is I will zero the gauge and with the gauge now zeroed or basically zeroed uh, it will wait another 20 seconds. Now it, one of the things Marlin does support the pause function but one of the things I have not seen is how from the front panel you can change the uh, pause function or answer the pause function. Uh, so if anybody knows, let me know in the comments below. But one of the things you'll notice, so now it's running through its scenario of measuring the bed as it goes through. And I'll do some um, uh, zooms on the uh, dial indicator as this is going through. But as you can see, just like with the Creality, it's going back and forth across the bed. And you can see the deltas in the bed measurement. Now, you can also tram the bed with this indicator. Now, notice I didn't say level the bed. So, number one, uh, you still do the paper level, but then what you do is go to the corners and then the center and do the level. Now, one of the things you'll notice is that there's a little bit of a, a bump in the center of this thing, too. We're kind of off to this corner. This is one of the things. I, I know I got a lot of nasty emails when I did the... Uh, bed leveling on this and I, I just simply followed the JG Aurora instructions and I got a number of things people say oh you don't need any more than three points well the problem is and is again I covered out in the tramming video this bed is far from level itself or being flat itself probably better put so what we have to do is average that error and that's where something like this is nice because one of the things we can map this error and distribute it better and then also use this gauge for more detailed tramming so as we're going across. So just like with the Creality, uh, we map the bed in a uh, rectilinear fashion as this and as it goes back and forth. And then what we'll do is we'll actually run a diagonal across it. And so you can kind of see, you know, how it tapers a little bit to the side as our numbers are increasing. And it's going to go through. And again, you know, notice on the back, I'm bringing the bed all the way forward and I'm stopping before it hits back here. Now we're running the diagonal measurements. So it'll run to this corner, then it'll run up to this corner, and then back to that corner. So you can get a diagonal perspective. You no notice how far off we drop. And then, again, it comes up here. So we can now remove the gauge. And so we just pop the gauge off and we're set. So I thought this was a cool little setup. I'm going to probably remix this a little bit more um, for a future version where I put some, uh, you know, maybe a small uh, bolt or situation here where I can tighten this on here uh, 
so then it doesn't depend upon this clip and you can have any type of manifold down here that you want and it'll still work because it'll be a pressure fit for the most part it still is pretty much a pressure fit between this back part and this um, fan housing now you might get a little bit of fan rubbing or something you know when you put it on because you are squeezing this fan housing a little bit but usually when the tape comes off it just kind of flexes back to normal or at least has been my case so anyways I'll have the link to this part out on Thingiverse uh, down below I also have the code out on the DIY3dtech.com site there'll be a link again down below for that code and uh, take a look on the page I might have some other tramming code and everything out there by the time you see this video and so anyways hopefully you found this of interest and of value if you did hey give it a big thumbs up don't forget follow me on Thingiverse and also Swag Shop will be up there a lot of cool stuff in the Swag Shop check it out when you get a chance if you're not subscribed please do over there I put out regular content and uh, also you got questions comments uh, something you want to see me design build etc hit me up in the comments below happy to see if I can do it for you anyways Cheers and see you guys in the next video. Like below and subscribe to the channel to keep up to date on all of our